On today's show, 4680 cells going to production, Tesla full self-driving updated, and Audi's vision of luxury cars. G'day and welcome, my name's Chris, and if you're new to the channel, thanks for coming along, I really do appreciate it. Maybe consider subscribing. If you want to see more content like this more regularly, head over here to Patreon where you get behind the scenes, news, polls, and stuff that I just can't show you here on YouTube. And a big awesome thank you not only to all my patrons, but in particular my producers, Adam Tyson, Alan Burnt, Ashley Hill, David Linham, Chaotic Media Technology, MNICT Specialist, Nigel Ferrier, and Tessa from the Gong. And well wishes to Michael Fink, a subscriber of the channel and EV champion on Twitter, who recently had surgery. So, Michael, I do hope you're well and making a speedy recovery, mate, but remember, now you're on the other side of the equation. How long would it take you to get from Melbourne Mooney Pond Tesla Supercharger to Coffs Harbour in a Tesla Model 3 long range? Roughly 19 hours and more than five hours of charging. So listen to this amazing world record. Ford's newest all-electric car, the Mustang Mach-E, has become a triple Guinness World Record holder after adding two charging titles to its ultra-efficiency record. They drove from the northernmost tip of Scotland, John O'Groats, to Land's End in the southwest of England. Total time using a better route planner would be 15 hours and almost an hour and a half of recharging, again using a Tesla Model 3 long range. But the folks over at Ford only spent 43 minutes and 13 seconds doing it. This makes it the shortest charge time on Britain's longest journey, wiping over 30 minutes from the previous world record attempt holder, well, yeah, holder, done by a Tesla. For those thinking, yeah, they must have used like ultra rapid chargers about 250 kilowatts, but no, they actually did uh, this long range, in the long range version of the Mach-E, which only has a single motor and is limited to 150 kilowatts. In July, the Mackie's ultra efficiency is on, on the same route, consumed the least energy by traveling 10.4 kilometers per kilowatt hour, equating to a range of about 800 kilometers. How do they do it? Hypermiling, slowly accelerating, going slower than the actual speed limit, wheels hyperinflated to near breaking point, not using accessories in the car like the heater, aircon, and more than likely choosing a day when temperature was at a Goldilocks sweet spot for optimum battery performance. Right now, there's probably some of you saying, hold my beer, challenge accepted. You know how Tesla, in fact, most car makers use a variety of battery suppliers like LG Chem, Panasonic, CATL, and more? Well, there's a company located in Israel, Stordot, who have been working on the much famed 4680 cell. Made famous by Tesla's battery day last year, the battery name 4680 purely refers to the battery diameter of 46mm and length of 80 And it turns out that StoreDot have been working on this format for more than 3 years and hold 5 patents on cell design and tech. <sighs> the highlight being being able to completely recharge in just 10 minutes. 10 minutes! StoreDot claimed that the silicon dominant batteries are capable of extreme fast charging, or XFC, with thanks to their cylindri cylindrical cell design, compared to pouch technology seen in some battery types. The 4680 um, cell uh, format requires unique chemistry adaptation to offset like greater internal pressures, gas release, and avoidance of potential leakage, but somehow they've been able to work through all of these issues and enter production at EV Energy, and uh, that's like StoreDot's uh, manufacturer supply partner in China. To be clear, this chemistry and I guess manufacturing method is different to what Tesla is working on with their in-house 4680 cell, um, which they said will have like five times the energy density of current battery packs, reduce cell design costs by about 14%, approximately 16% more range, and power output six times greater when compared against Tesla's current batteries. StoreDot's XFC batteries can deliver a 50% reduction in charging time at the same cost and will go into full production by 2024. This battery by StoreDot and Tesla's Zoom will be able to shift people from 
petrol to electric vehicles as right now they don't actually know that there's no such thing as range anxiety when you've got an EV. In fact for the majority of them they'll wake up every morning and appreciate that the car is absolutely 100% full and will never importantly never spend 5 or 10 minutes out of a service station every week. I guess people just want to hear that a car can fill in 10 minutes so yeah this would be a good thing. Now in a moment you're going to see some stories that uh, my patrons saw last week but remember they also saw about well, half a dozen other ones so remember if you want to see this sort of content more regularly do support me over there on Patreon. So let's get into now a round of bites. BYD North America has unveiled two next generation battery electric heavy duty trucks the Gen 3 8TT and 6F unveiled at the ACT Expo in Long Beach California. The Gen 3 ATT and 6F feature cab styled by Wolfgang Joseph Egger. He's like the renowned former Audi chief designer. And BYD says that they provide not only a stylish cab, but also offer improved aerodynamics and energy efficiency. The trucks are equipped with an electronic park braking system, keyless entry, push to start functions, and have up to 185 kilowatts of CCS charging capability. The extended range version of the ATT and 6S are about 320 kilometers range using the American EPA method. Tell me, what do you see here? A Land Rover Series 2A? Yeah, half correct. But more precisely, and you, and you know the sort of show that I do, is it actually an electrified Land Rover by Everati. Featuring like a 60 kilowatt hour battery, 111 kilowatts of power, 300 newton meters of torque and 200 kilometers of range. It looks mighty impressive, doesn't it? Beautiful. Unfortunately for us Aussies, this is actually an English company, so perhaps the story isn't this, but instead this. This is John's take on an electric Land Rover. They're a Melbourne startup company who, who were featured on the Drive's website last year. These guys are ripping out the internal combustion engine bits and turning them into silent battery electric vehicles and importantly not filling the air with dirty diesel fumes, NOx and carbon which as you know isn't good for us. I love that companies like these are converting old Land Rovers into like fun mobiles that are guilt free and most likely way more fun to drive than the old petroleum versions. Two weeks every Tesla fan's worst punchline. Two weeks has famously been said by Elon Musk on everything from go to Mars and more importantly full self-driving public release. And so he is hoping that this tweet from Elon Musk on September 2nd will hold true. Let's revisit this perhaps next week and see if version 10 has indeed been released to those lucky beta testers in the US. Then towards the end of September where we're He's promising that it'll be good enough to have public opt-in. Concept car time, but instead of lamenting that it will never be built, given most circumstances, this car by Audi is stunning and it's so well thought out that I want to share it with you. In a moment I'm going to dive into some of the hidden details in Audi's Grand Sphere concept car, but first a high level summary. Featuring a 120 kilowatt hour battery, two electric motors capable of delivering a total output of 530 kilowatts and torque of 960 newton meters. This concept car features 800 volt charging technology, meaning that it can be charged with up to 270 kilowatts in a very short time at fast charging stations. That would mean in just 10 minutes there will be sufficient charge to go more than 300 kilometers. Now, here's some highlights. The Grand Sphere is an extremely low and long vehicle at 5.35 meters in length. The Grand Sphere Saloon will have level 4 automated driving, meaning, and watch this. Also, check out how lounge like this chair is with all that leg room. Very nice. The seats have built-in vents and speakers, perfect for sleeping in. Controls are a mixture of touch-sensitive surfaces, eye detection and hand signals, like this Darth Vader move. Didn't you know that he once said, Crank up the tunes. 
The next highlight is its lack of B pillar and how the doors both open allowing what Audi is calling priority boarding. There's a lot more here and I'm really excited to see what Audi's vision of what electric vehicles can look like, how they'll operate and the possibilities that are afforded by EVs. I only wish that they actually made this into a real thing. If you want to go see the presentation in full, it's only about 20 minutes. I've left a link to this plus all today's stories in full, so please do go check them out. All right, well, that will do it for today's episode. And if you watched it now, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't already, do consider subscribing. I know a lot of you aren't, so yeah, do it. It's free. Why not? And again, if you want to support the channel, come and join me over here on Patreon where you get early access to news, polls, and behind the scenes a lot more. Big thank you to all my patrons, and for you guys and girls out there, please do stay safe, be good, and be green.